Welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News. Just before we take our third interview for the day, uh, there has been breaking news from Abuja. Uh, a statement from the National Assembly indicating that no date has yet been fixed for the National Assembly to reconvene to consider the INEC budget. The Senior President, Dr. Bukola Saraki, and Speaker of the House of Representatives have directed that all senators, honorable members, and the public uh, to inform them that a date has not been set for the reconvening of the Senate and the House of Representatives to consider the Independent National Electoral Commission 2019 elections budget request, which was forwarded by President Buhari on July 17. The leadership of the two chambers met and agreed to reconvene to consider the proposal this week, before which a meeting between the Joint Senate and House Representatives Committees on electoral matters and officials of INEC must have held on or before Monday, August 13. The joint committees were also expected to meet with the joint Senate and House committees on appropriations, loans and debts on the Eurobond loan request after we two reports will have been ready for presentation in the two chambers. However, no such meeting had taken place yet as a result of which both Senate and the House of Representatives cannot reconvene as there is no report to consider. Until the committees have a ready report for the consideration of the two chambers, it will be most ir irresponsible, the statement says, to recall members from recess, especially those that may have traveled to Saudi Arabia for the Arch. The statement is signed by Yusuf Olani Yonu, Special Advisor Media and Publicity to the Senate President, and Turaki Azan, Special Advisor Media and Public Affairs to the Speaker of the House of Representatives. Thank you, Ribbon. Export trade is, sub, is a subdivision of international trade where goods produced in one country are transported to another country for sale or trade, which is a crucial element of a country's economy as exports stimulate econo economic growth. Nigeria is a country which has the largest market in Africa with a population of more than 180 million people. In 2015, the Observatory of Economic Complexity ranked Nigeria as the 49th largest export economy in the world, having exported goods and products worth well above $47.8 billion and imported goods worth $39.5 billion. Joining us today to talk about the role of government in creating an environment for export is the Director General, Nigerian Export Promotion Council, Mr. Shagun Awolowa. Welcome to the morning show. Good morning. Hi. Thank you for having me. I don't know that. <laughs> Good to see you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes. Okay. Well, let, let me fire the first okay, shot. Okay, go ahead. Move now, on. your uh, council has been talking about a zero policy, zero oil. Zero oil plan. Plan yeah. or right. policy or agenda, mm. zero right. oil. Mm. Is it really possible for us to have a zero oil agenda, uh, considering that, you know, oil is the major revenue and for Nigeria uh, well, yes uh, it's uh, it, it, it's an aspiration and uh, nations must aspire uh, to to do things uh, when we started looking at the zero oil plan uh, then uh, if you remember there was a point where oil that led to the uh, recession of our economy oil traded uh, for as low as twenty dollars okay. uh, per barrel our cost of production was 32. So that it was no, no brainer that the economy had to fall into a recession, uh, despite its best intentions. Now, we look at it and we say Nigeria must and can survive in a world economy in where she no longer sells oil. Okay. Uh, it's a big and bold ambition, <laughs> like, like you say, Alex. But countries, you, you work with an ambition and they get a plan and you go towards it. Now, when we, we looked at it, the top 20 countries in the world, uh, none of them was trading oil. Okay. Yeah. And they were the richest countries in the world. So, uh, no, no, sorry. Only three of them were trading oil. That was Saudi Arabia, the UAE, and... Uh, Kuwait? Um, Kuwait? No, no, no. Kuwait is not in the top 20. Okay. Anyway, take... That, for example, and when, when that tells us, then if you remember, Ruben, rightly, when our economy was, uh, was rebased and we looked at the figures and we found out that oil was just 9% of, of our GDP 
agriculture was only 27 percent. Uh, services sector, telecommunications, uh, was 57 percent, Nollywood, etc. So what, in fact, it was telling us that, look, guys, your economy is already diversified. Okay. But you are not getting foreign exchange from it because all our foreign earnings were still from oil, 90 percent from oil. So when you take all the, that together, then you see the guests you've had on before me, mm -hmm. uh, is it Funke uh, 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 the like company Mobila is working with now, is all on, on diversification. Right. You know, they're looking at other ways. And those ways are so vast in Nigeria. Uh, we picked 17 uh, sectors okay. where we believe Nigeria can, can, can advance. Mm -hmm. Now, one of those sectors, because of time, let me talk of one, petrochemicals. Okay. Now, the petrochemicals industry trades at $150 billion a year. That's the global uh, uh, cost of that. But Nigeria is not there. Wow. Because we're importing. And yet, we're a petrol economy. And that's the sad thing about it. But then, when you look at what is happening now, uh, we, we, we've run this zero oil plan to all stakeholders, uh, public sector, private sector, uh, deliberating with them, uh, uh, working on it, tweaking it at time. We had a meeting with uh, Adiko Dangote uh, a couple of years back now, and he had just, uh, he was considering whether to go for a refinery. He had tried to buy the, uh, pu uh, the public uh, ones uh, to no to no success, and we gave him. We went through with him with the plan, um, and he has keyed on to it. Now it's going to be his refinery is on. It's going to come on stream, and from that refinery alone, the last time we spoke, his figures he was looking at was almost nine hundred million dollars in exports okay. on petrochemicals. And uh, you had that to our non-oil exports. You see where it will take us. And apart from meeting local demand, so we'll be importing less. Uh, well, I, I guess for you to succeed with this uh, zero oil uh, policy, mm. you will need to interface with the state governments. Oh, yes. Uh, uh, and, you know, but you have offices in just about 17 states. You yes, we're, 17, we're trying. Yeah, we're, we're not everywhere. We're not, we can't be. We're, 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 we're talking about one, one uh, product. One, uh, one, one, product one, state, state. One, one state, one product. Yes. yes. How uh, is that working out? Now, that is, now, that's a very good question because what this government has now done is that uh, we, we address the National Economic uh, Council, which is the highest uh, economic advisory council in the country, chaired by uh, His Excellency the Vice President. And after that, they set up, they decided, look, we're going to take this your plan seriously, Shagun. We're going to set up an export uh, promotion uh, committee. Okay. Uh, that it's called the National Export uh, Promotion uh, Committee to activate and work out this zero oil plan. And the chairperson, uh, the chairman, is the governor of Jigawa State. We have also the governor of Lagos State and the uh, governor of Ebony State as uh, committee members uh, with um, uh, all the sectoral ministries that are involved in this. Our uh, parent ministry, Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investment, uh, we have um, Mines and Steel, because that's another big aspect of our zero oil plan, and uh, communications. Uh, we have many of those uh, on board. So we started meeting. And what we do is that we, we, we've had uh, two uh, national meetings now where all the representatives of each state, and uh, we tax the governors to give us a representative, one that has direct access to the governor. Uh, so in some cases, it's not necessarily the commissioner, uh, as you know, how government works. Yeah, yeah. So we have all of them, we, we meet. Uh, we've done two meetings now. The technical committee is meeting. We're going to be going back to the uh, council to report. And some of the things that are interesting that's going to come up is that we're going to set up an anchor borrowers program for export. The CBN has designed it. They're also a member. Okay. They designed that. We're going to come up with that so we can actually now have more finance uh, towards export. Uh, the whole idea is that our economy has, has to be export driven yes export led so we can earn foreign exchange it's all about earning foreign exchange let me quickly point out in 
in the zero oil plan uh, three years ago when we were coming up we, we looked at soya beans soya beans is trading 100 billion dollars mm -hmm. annually and now when you look at the trade war going on in america if we had been ready if we had increased production and productivity of our soya beans will be in a, a perfect opportunity now to sell to china okay. china is the biggest buyer of soya beans now they're having problems with the united states of america and president trump is raising raising tariffs it's done that on soya it's doing it on steel it's mm -hmm. affected the turkish uh, lira and the we are looking at all the outcomes the 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 turkish money has lost 40 percent of its value in just one week yeah. so you can see the importance of what trade is but had we followed the zero oil plan it's about increased production and productivity if we had improved on our soya beans supply imagine the chinese market will have just come straight to us well i like the fact of gold you kept stressing oh it's about any foreign exchange any yeah. foreign exchange yeah. uh but how do you deal with the challenge of illegal exports particularly in the solid mineral sector okay. we don't uh, seem to be captured ah uh, yes yes we 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 have um uh the international trade center in geneva uh told us we we held a survey at across all our border points and we we see it uh this trade going and we, we were saying, oh, we're losing about uh, $8 billion in uh, informal trade. Yeah. Call it informal trade. It's not really illegal. Well, <laughs> Some of the things may be uh, banned and not, uh, yeah. but it's uh, informal trade. Mm -hmm. But the ITC said, no, Shagun, look, figures we have here is that it's about $40 billion, okay. mm -hmm. uh, which, is, which is huge. Now, how do we, we, we deal with that? We have uh, uh, the ECOWAS, uh, when you want to export through the ECOWAS, it's through the ETLS, uh, which is a very cumbersome and long thing for companies to, mm. uh, to advert to. So it's only big companies okay. that do it. But the majority of these exports are SMEs, MSMEs. Okay. So yeah. how do you help them? How do you attract them into the formal trade so we can capture the, fi uh, the figures? Now, that now takes you again reason to the ease of doing business. Okay, I want to go back to that yeah. anchor borrowing program that you okay, talked about. Okay, borrowing program, yeah. SMEs. Mm -hmm. How does that work? Now, you, if you see what the federal government has done with rice on that, they've been able to get money uh, to, to, to the farms, okay. uh, to, the, uh, to the anchors, you know, so they can increase production and raise more value on rice. And that's what's happening now. So we're importing less. Uh, and very soon, we're going to be exporting rice. That's, that's the key when you meet the local supply. So we said, look, let's devise uh, something like this. And we speak the specific products. Okay. Uh, the technical committee uh, is almost finishing work on that. And we go back to the CBN before we go back to the uh, Economic uh, Council uh, with that, with the sectors we have picked. And then we raise up uh, real big money in that. You mentioned so we can 17 sectors and one of them... 11 sectors. 11, mm. oh, 11, 11 category A sectors okay. and another 11 category B sectors. Okay. Uh, a lot of people tell me, look, Shagun, why don't you just pick one sector and let us drive it? Yes. <laughs> this is Nigeria. Okay. Nigeria is just blessed, you know, from all across, from the north to the south to the west. There are different things. You know, you can't say you only want to concentrate on cocoa, you know, and they are looking at farmers only in the west uh, and maybe in some of this in the south, south-south uh, of the country. Then you look at soya beans, they're looking at the middle belt, you're looking at the north, you look at rice. You know, it's, the country is just blessed. Mm. Uh, we, again, the advantage, that is the big advantage for Nigeria. Other countries, they have only one product, two products. Right. Uh, I just came back yesterday morning. Uh, from Dubai, uh, on, we had to go for an emergency meeting on, on, on cashew. Cashew is another, it has been a big win for us. Uh, but Your suddenly the say, prices... Say you travel a lot, you travel too much. <laughs> <laughs> that is the work. You can't promote export from... Uh, I will all yeah. it. You have to be everywhere. Now, let me just give you a quick example on cashew. Cashew is very, it was a win-win for us. Uh, farmers, in the last two years, farmers have been happy. 
traders, exporters that may happy. Uh, but then there was a crisis in Vietnam. Vietnam is the biggest buyer of our cash. There was a crisis in that country. A few fraudulent uh, people there in Vietnam. Right? So the banks stopped credit for them. So if I, it affected what they could buy. So this year, so suddenly we have 30,000 metric tons in our warehouses all over the country that we cannot sell. 30,000 uh, tons will give you about maybe 30 something million dollars. That's, so that is what is there now. So people are panicking. The price is falling. But so we, we had to call, we called the Vietnamese and the Indians, another big buyers, and we agreed to meet uh, halfway, uh, meet in Dubai. They came and we went. That's the uh, Cote d'Ivoire, Tanzania, uh, Guinea Bissau, Mozambique. So we, we were just there and we're looking for ways. Uh, I want to offload my 30,000 uh, uh, tons I have uh, so my buyers and my, my exporters can be happy. But Cote d'Ivoire has 500,000 metric tons that they had stuck with. It's huge for them. You know, so this is just the nature of what happens in international trade that you're looking at. I, I try to draw attention to some of the criticisms of, yeah. your, of your counsel yeah. earlier on, where, mm. where that one was uh, <laughs> directed at you. Mm. But there, there have also been some controversies around the management of the export promotion ground and the export development. No, no, the, the People the talking export... about delays, about lack of oh, fairness, yes, we... about, you know, have you resolved some of those controversies? Oh, yeah. I don't yes. want to mention names. No, no, no. There, don't, there are no. There, there, there's really uh, no names. No big controversy. The, the the we had what we call our export expansion grant. Yes. Uh, basically, we're an incentive agency. Yes. We give incentives to law and promote export. Now, the program was was it was. Let me let me try and explain in layman terms yes. so people to, to understand. Uh, it's we had the highest threshold of, of incentives in the whole world. It was 30% for processed goods. So meaning that if you are uh, manufacturing these pens, you know, and you export, for example, $3 million worth of it, you remit your money back to CBN, mm -hmm. uh, we are going to be giving you $900,000 back as an incentive. Very nice. Saying, very nice, yeah, <laughs> of course. <laughs> saying that, okay, because we have challenges with power, we have challenges with infrastructure, we have all this, so we want you to make until you can compete internationally. Mm -hmm. So you were getting $900,000 back. It used to be cash. They stopped it, then it became uh, duty waiver certificates through the custom service. So it went on and on, on and on. The customs now said, listen, the government has given me a, a target I must meet. Then you come from behind and you give me all these bills. It's not going to happen. So we looked at it. The last government actually stopped it. Yes, it was suspended. It was suspended. So we looked at it, but this government came on. Look, let, let's look at it. Look, NEPC, do an holistic audit of this and come up with what is workable and what is sustainable. Uh, because at that rate, you couldn't sustain it. So we've done it. We've done an holistic survey of it, we brought down the, uh, the, the, the threshold uh, for processed goods, the highest, to 15%. Uh, government has looked at all the bills uh, from the last, that has, we've carried on for the last four or five years now. And government has said, okay, we're not going to pay you back because it's a debt that government has owned. It's not part of our national debt. And it shot our national that debt. That's where the up problem the, came from uh, and the complaints trillions. came from. Yeah, but government has said that we owe. Because government is a continuum, it continues. It doesn't matter why it's from 1999 to date, it continues. So government has said we'll pay you with promissory notes. But meanwhile, the system, uh, the EEG, is back on track with lower threshold, do it. But we now said, okay, in addition to the EEG, let us also use. The other one we have is the Export Development Fund that helps SMEs, MSMEs. Because the, the last one, the EEG, is a post-shipment incentive. The other okay. one is pre-shipment. Yeah. Right. The other one is pre-shipment. The nice. post-shipment one, it assumes that you are big, you're, you're good, then you can do everything you want to do. And then you come back and say, give me my money. 
I, I've done one. this. I wish you had more time. On Yo, you segment. need you need more time for me. Yeah, I can yeah, take you because, you because I need so to take issues. you yeah. all the sectors. Yeah. I need to tell you what is happening. I need to tell exporters and Nigerians right. yeah. that the future right. is really bright. I actually wanted to ask you a follow-up question about providing trade information okay. for exporters. You know, yeah. which is really an area. But but I want you to do. Please go to our website okay. www.nepc.gov.ng. Okay. Uh, uh, it's a new. We we just I I don't want the comments from the website because we just upgraded it. Okay. We worked with a company called Globally Cool. Uh, in the Netherlands. You pay for advertising. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was just pitched that in. So oh. please go to the website and all these questions you can you yeah. can you can find them there. Thank great. you so much for joining thank us. Thank you, today. thank you very much. Pleasure. Thank you. The great Ruben. <laughs> <laughs> it's time thank now you. for a short break. When we return, Stephanie Coca will be here with a review on what's trending. Stay with us.